so something a little bit different for you today. Johnny recently fancied carving a spoon, this spoon in fact, so I dragged the camera out and decided to film him. Now it's worth noting before you watch the video that Johnny has been working with knives and axes and shinies his whole life. He's very safety aware, he's very conscious of himself, his fingers, his limbs and the shiny sharp things that he works with so if you're new to carving and you kind of fancy giving it a go please don't think you have to chop an axe as quickly as Johnny does. In time no doubt you will but he's been doing this for a very long time and in fact if you hang around to the end of the video you'll see just some of the collection of spoons that he's carved over the years. There is a lot. And also we're going to be sending this to one of you guys so if you would like to own the spoon that Johnny carves in this video then hang around to the end of the video to find out how. In the meantime, kick back and relax and enjoy a little time carving with Johnny. Hey Johnny. Hey Janie. <laughs> so tell us, there's a heap of logs in the log shed. Mm -hmm. What is it about this log? Why did you pick this one? What made you see a spoon in this particular log? Well, this log is fresh log, which I brought in from some logs that I was chopping down. Oh, so it's no, not from trees the, are It's not down. actually from all these logs then? You didn't get it from the log no, shed? No. Okay, tell me more. Well, it's, uh, it came from work actually. I mm -hmm. stole it. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad man. I know. It's, um, no, it's just a little bit of log that um, came off a tree. I thought it was sycamore initially, um, but it's actually maple. Um, oh, wow. It's very similar, but the wood is actually tougher. Sic sycamore is very nice to uh, to carve. That's why I chose that bit of log. Um, but I was wrong. It I've been hit by lightning or a big bit of wind or something. It's a um, big branch had fallen out and um, it needed tidying up. So huh? that's where that came from. Very cool. And why did you want fresh log and not a seasoned one from our lovely log shed? Because fresh is a lot easier to carve. Mm -hmm. Green wood carving. It's um, so it's it's like softer, is the wood it's soft? It's much softer, yeah, yeah. It's lovely to carve, yeah. Okay. Whereas when it gets hard and it's dry, it's um, it's a lot tougher. Okay, that makes sense. So if you were gonna be making a spoon that you wanted to use, could you use any green wood? Pretty much, yeah. You don't want to be using poisonous kinds of wood like you. Um, rhododendron I guess even oak oak's got tannins in um, oh really which some say you shouldn't really use for spoons also it's so tough but certainly you because it's got mm, that is poisonous ta taxarin or something in it which um which is poisonous okay but um, some people do use spoons um, I've got you handles on some of my things that I've made oh so you just wouldn't make the bowl part the part the part that you put yeah, in your food or in your mouth the part that you put in your mouth okay and if somebody's watching this and they've never carved a spoon before, is there like a beginner's wood? Is there a tree out there that is the easiest, smoothest, butteriest to carve? Is that word, butteriest? <laughs> yeah, it makes sense to me. It's, um, sycamore's pretty good um, for anyone, really. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's quite not, not free. Um, oh, that's important, right? Yeah, you don't want to have a knot in what you're doing. Because that, that complicates things, though they can be used and I suppose nice a nice effect. A knot could be incorporated into it could the design. Be, yeah, exactly. Perhaps yeah. on the handle, you wouldn't yeah. want it on the bowl. Yeah, you? on the end of the handle or something. But um, yeah, I've seen some nice, nice ones done with knots in. It's it's unusual because it, it makes it more awkward. But mm, um, sure. Yeah, you want knot free. Um, you don't want something where you've got another branch coming out or whatever because uh, that will complicate things and you don't want to be using the middle you start off a spoon by using an axe or a throw or something to split your piece of wood down mm -hmm. the middle and then use each side you never want to make a spoon uh, carved out of the middle of the wood because that's where all the splits come from and you will potentially um, have a spoon that gets splits in Okay, let's talk about these tools. So to start with, you're using an axe. That's to like bring the rough shape of the spoon out of the log. Yeah, yeah. I use the axe for splitting the uh, the piece of wood in half. 
and then into quarters or thirds or whatever. It needs to be kept sharp? It needs to be very sharp, yeah. Yeah, as all the tools do. Yeah, sharp knife or blade makes yes. for a safe blade, right? Yes, and it also makes your life a lot easier in cutting and carving. Yeah, less yeah. effort going in. That's always a good thing. Yep. Okay, so once you've done the axe work, then you get this knife. Is it, what's the name of this knife? Is it just a knife? A carving knife? Um, yeah, a carving knife, sloyd knife. It's um, just a small, small blade, which is ideal for carving with, really. It's, it's fairly thin with a very sharp edge. It's what they call a Scandinavian grind on the blade. So what's this, what, obviously you're sharpening your knife, what's that thing you're using? It's, um, it's a diamond stone. Do you have to do that every time? You don't have to, no, but um, it's, um, it's, it's important to keep a good edge on the knife. So by doing this, just keep keeping it maintained just a few, going over a few times just to keep the edge nice and sharp. All right, why are you putting toothpaste on this? Toothpaste. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that not toothpaste? John? No, it's not toothpaste. No, it's um, it's actually a chrome polish called Auto Soul. Oh, that you put on which, the cars. Um, which you put on the car, <sighs> car on your chrome bumpers and whatever. Yeah, it's 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 a little bit gritty. Sure. And um, it's what you put on your lever strop. And looking at this bit of footage, I'm guessing this is why your forearms are often naked and hairless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, common it's, it's a, cars, yeah, it's a good way, good way just to test. Um, test how sharp it how is. How sharp it is. Yeah. I mean, it's um, if the hairs just pop off really easily, then um, <laughs> you've got a good edge. So. <laughs> so you're a secret barber. A secret arm barber. <laughs> <laughs> An arm barber. An arm barber. <laughs> So I don't really know what stropping is. You're not sharpening by stropping. You're buffing? It's it's keeping, it's doing the final polishing bit of sharpening. Okay. Yeah, it's um, sharpening um, can cover many things um, by using, if you've got like a really blunt knife, you sharpen it but you, by using coarser stones. Mm -hmm. um, but this is just like the final part of sharpening. Yeah. And um, if you do it regular, then, um, just, you just need to do it a few times rather than using it. It keeps the edge for longer. Okay, and obviously once you've done the knife part then you can't really use the knife to scoop out that bowl. So this is where the crook knife is it called? Yeah, crook knife, spoon knife. It's um, yeah, it's got a curve on the blade for, uh, for getting in and doing the bowl of the spoon. Um, You've got a few crook knives, but people, if they're just getting into this, they could just order one to start with. Yeah, again, Mora do um, do a pretty good one. They're um, pretty cheap. They're pretty cheap. Yeah, yeah, I think they're around fifteen pounds. Um, and so. they're obviously all in different sizes or whatever. Is there like, would you recommend a size? To um, I would. Starting? You'll need to leave it in the description below because <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can't remember. I, I haven't bought one for a long time. No but, worries. Um, if anyone's listening to this, pop down to the yeah. description box and below, and we'll have there's, it there. There's lots of makers out there that um, make bespoke ones and what have you. But um, just to start off, um, more are a very good um, one to try. Actually, what we'll do, people, is leave the links to a cheap. No, uh, axe, a knife, and a crook knife down in the description box. Johnny can find some links for us, and we'll just drop that down there. And he, I'm sure he um, wouldn't mind finding like his dream axe, knife, and crook knife too. That would be interesting to see the difference in price between the two. <laughs> yeah, one thing to say though is um, if you haven't done this kind of thing before, um, it's best to go on a course just to learn the basics and learn some safety really because using an axe um, you, I mean you're swinging a very sharp implement around and um, if you're not careful you can injure yourself quite badly or others even mm. um, same with the knives it's, um, it's learning to use the knives properly um, how to hold them and all that kind of stuff so um, there's lots of people out there that do courses and um, I would highly advise someone who is new to it to go and do that. Yeah, I would too, actually. I've done a, 
a spoon carving workshop and I've made a few spoons myself. Um, I'm not into it as much as Johnny is, but I would agree that having someone to show you the, the basics is invaluable. Yeah. Okay, so you've carved your spoon. Can you just like eat with it now or do you have to let it dry out or do you have to oil it? Or like, tell us like step by step the, the time frames as well. Like you've carved your spoon, then what do you need to do? You don't need anything really. I mean, you can, as soon as you've you've carved it, you can use it straight away. But um, to prolong it, um, it's best to let it dry and then to oil it. Um, and is and that going to take weeks or days or? <laughs> different different woods take different drying times. It's um, yeah. I mean, the process can be speeded up um, at the risk of getting more splits, but. Mm -hmm. um, some people put in the microwave to dry out. Which, really? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit of intense, but it, it does draw the moisture out. But um, you are opening it up as more of a risk of the splits appearing. Um, but yeah, it's it's best to put it in like somewhere where it's not going to get too hot, and um, just let it dry out for a few weeks, and then come back to it and. Quite often when you pick them up again, you can have a look at them and you'll see bits that you've missed and you can do final cuts and finishing. Um, some people like to have perfection in their knives and they use scrapers and some people sand them. Um, it's very common when you're beginning to um, make spoons to get the sandpaper out to uh, quickly do away with some nasty looking bits or whatever, but um, it's as you progress with, um, with spoon carving you tend to do everything with the knife um, but yeah some people like using scrapers to uh, to get the bowl really smooth and um, so the time to do all of the finishing is when the spoon is actually dry because you're not doing any deep cuts or anything so everything's a little bit easier then I like to brand brand my uh, my pickaxe mark into mine so that's the time for doing that oh this is um, cool you made this brand didn't you yeah yeah how did you make this i made it from um a large headed nail which <laughs> that's I, ingenious <laughs> i put in the vise and filed it down with those little files until i turned it into a pickaxe sort of shape and why a pickaxe mr pickett a pickaxe for the picket <laughs> yeah it's um i was doing some research into family history on the internet and some of the picket crests crest of arms of old <laughs> had pickaxes that's on brilliant. them brilliant so i thought and well that's as that's as good a mark as anything it's kind and of cool as well because you often use a pickaxe I've, in your job <laughs> i've used a pickaxe many times before being in the building trade that's so cool <laughs> And then um, once once all of that's done, it can be oiled. What oil do you use? Can you use any oil? No, you can't use any oil. Um, I use a raw linseed oil. You can't just go and buy um, linseed oil from, from the builder's merchants or whatever, because that's a totally different one. Um, it needs to be a food grade one. Yeah. Um, you can use um, walnut oil. That's a good one to use. Um, Olive oil? Olive oil, no, because it doesn't cure. Tongue oil is another one that you can use, but you have to be careful with people with nut allergies with that. So if you were making spoons to sell, for example, then you wouldn't use a tongue oil? No. 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 Okay. Yeah, and then um, that's your spoon, really. Brilliant. Jobs are good. Jobs are good. And very quickly, I want to show you guys our kitchen, because talking about Johnny's little branding iron that he made, he's actually branded our kitchen worktop as well, because... He made our kitchen because he's a clever chap. Okay, so there's your spoon all finished. How do you look after it? Can you stick it in the dishwasher? Do you need to be careful in hot water with it? Like, How do you look after a handmade wooden spoon? Um, it's best to avoid the dishwasher. I say chuckling because <laughs> um, we do tend to put some of us in the you dishwasher. You do. I always ask permission before I put your spoons in the dishwasher. Yeah, you, you do mind, find do some you? woods. Some woods are okay. Um, the ones with the bark on the handles, I wouldn't put in the dishwasher. But um, yeah, some have gone in there. But the dishwasher does um, tend to warp the wood a, um, a bit more. It does seem to dry it out. And I guess the thing is, if you get into carving spoons, then you don't actually mind if you lose one because it's an excuse to sit down and carve another one, isn't it? 
Yeah. Yeah. So you have got one or two spoons in your collection, haven't you, darling? Oh, it's not my collection. It's just um, just a hobby, really. And um, they go into uh, go into a pot and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, it was difficult to close our kitchen drawer, actually, because there were so many wooden spoons in there. As a side note, Johnny's also made us some wooden plates on the lathe, and they do go into the dishwasher. And look at this one. This is so funny. He used it as a, a saucepan lid the other day as well, didn't you? And it curled <laughs> right up. It was so funny. Yeah, they probably should be burnt, those ones. <laughs> They're really old, though. They've done they, it so yeah, well. Yeah, they've had splits in from pretty much new. So how long, all in all, do you think it took you to carve this spoon? Probably about an hour altogether. Okay. Hour and a half tops. Now you also make these cute little coffee scoops as well, of which I am a big fan. I love these coffee scoops. How Do these take the same amount of time really? Or... No, they're pretty quick to do. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they're a little bit smaller, um, which doesn't always mean they're going to be quicker, but um, no, the coffee scoops are pretty pretty quick. They've got quite deep bowls though, haven't they? And that must take more yeah, time. Yeah, but then I use a, a different kind of spoon knife for doing those. I've got, uh, got one that's got a shallower, um, um, angle on it that um, you can get in and um, do those a bit easier. Very, very cool. So, Johnny, what are we going to do with this spoon? Would you mind if we give it away? We could give it away, yeah. Shall we? Yeah, that'd be nice. I hope you enjoyed that. It was such fun to edit this video because it wasn't it wasn't me. It was somebody else. It was really lovely. I really enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed it too. And if you would like to see more kind of country craft kind of videos from us and from the people that we know, then please let me know below and I'll get my thinking cap on as to what other kind of projects like this that we could bring you. So if you fancy being in with a chance to own this little spoon that Johnny carved, then all you need to do is drop a comment below. End of story. Everybody that comments will automatically be in with a chance of winning this. Uh, what I'll do then is next Friday, so a week from today, or a week from the day that I'm publishing this video, I'll then draw a winner and I will kind of announce it on the community. So, you know, the little posts that you now get on YouTube, I'll announce the winner on there and I will leave it for you guys to get in touch with me. So please, next Friday, please make sure that you're kind of watching to see if it was you. Also, before I go, I want to give a shout out to Andre. Andre is one of my followers here. He's always down in the comments. And according to his son, who is my friend, hi JP, uh, Andre's been a little bit under the weather lately. So Andre, mwah, big hugs to you, sir. Please feel better soon. And thank you for the love that you shower my channel with. It's, it's really appreciated. So that's it for today. Please look after yourself, keep smiling, and I'll catch up with you in the next video. Over and out.